Right, hello everyone to part four of this uh, this data analysis course. And so, so far we've taken a look at the kind of basic layouts of CASA and how to open data, how to sort of begin to play around, look at the different options. And we've looked at calibrating data and then creating regions and backgrounds. Uh, and now we're going to get into the meat of starting to develop our peak models, starting to put in components, starting to try and extract some more information from our spectra. So we've uh, a couple of examples to look at and uh, and then we've also again we've got some practice data for you to download um, from the Guru page. So again if you're on YouTube check out the Guru page, links in the description. Uh, so after you've kind of watched this and gone through it you can uh, download some of the practice examples and there's also a few sort of read-along guides as well to go with that because uh, it can be a bit tricky trying to watch a video and do something at the same time. So there'll be a few um, few little guides there in on the Guru page just to help you work through um, bit by bit. And uh, so, yeah, without further ado, we will get on with it. So I'm just going to open up an example. So we've got a polymer here, polyvinyl pyrrolidone. And we're just going to so work through as we normally would. So I'm going to start off by going to the library, making sure we've got the right library file every time. I know it seems like beating a dead horse, but yeah, it's it's good to get that in at the start instead of realizing right at the end that you've forgotten to do it, and then you've got to go through and change all of your sensitivity factors. So uh, we've uh, we've done that. We're not going to cover it just yet, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but we're going to go in, create our region, so just a Shirley background across this. And it's not too noisy, so we're, we're pretty much going through there. Okay, so we're happy with our region, our background for our carbon. So I'm going to go across to the next tab now, which is this components tab. So if we look at our, our sort of carbon spectrum here, you can obviously see that there's a large main peak and then we've got what looks like a little shoulder at higher binding energy down here. So first thing, we can just stick some peaks in. So if we look at our first peak, if we click create, that will give us uh, a component and we, similar to the regions, we can go through and define all of these boxes and uh, we'll kind of, we'll go through these as we go along. Uh, rather than all at once. So if you click on the top of the peak, you can just move this and drag it around to where you'd like it and nice and easily. If you click halfway, you can change the fourth half maximum so we can make that narrower or we can make that nice and broad. Um, so you can just sort of manually drag and move these peaks around and get that roughly in the right place. I'm going to create another peak here. Okay, so our overall envelope doesn't quite match the the raw data here just yet. Uh, but we've got the peaks roughly in the right place for a major peak and then a, a little shoulder here. So I'm just going to click fit. So fit components will just fit uh, whatever peaks you've put in to the data as best it can to make this envelope fit. Uh, and so if we look what we've got, okay, so we've got a major peak here, a minor peak here, and some quite different forward have maximums. Um, but it describes the data, it does. However, it's not necessarily um, the most accurate description of the data because it will just put peaks in and if you don't give it any kind of constraints to work with, then it's not going to be a particularly great physical representation of the sample, of the emission rather. So we're going to go through and modify these peaks and see if we can improve that a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is we spoke a little bit about line shapes towards the end of the fundamentals course. Uh, so similar to when we're bringing up the the menu of the backgrounds, we can do the same with line shapes here. It will put in a few common ones. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list by any chance, uh, by any stretch. So if you add any custom line shapes, in, these will also be added to the list as well. So for example, let's let's start with an LA. 1.3230. So this is this void type line shape, uh, and this is a good 
sort of standard default line shape that you can use. If we were to then change this to say 1.5 and we open up the menu again, we can now see that's been added to this list. So if you do work with a lot of custom line shapes, then this is a really useful way to sort of keep tabs on, uh, on what line shapes you've used, what, uh, what I've got in here and there. So we've stuck those in uh, and now we can see, okay, it doesn't fit brilliantly down the lower binding energy side and if we come up to the top here there's something called the residual uh, and we can get a bit of a visualization of how well that's fitting the data at certain uh, parts of the spectrum so one thing that we need to sort of think about and talk about is the four without maximum so we've got two peaks here which are uh, quite different in terms of the actual width we've got 1.8 here and 1.3 here and um, so when we're fitting data um, such as this where we've got carbons we wouldn't expect much of a difference in terms of the four we have maximum we would expect them to be pretty constant and so in order to minimize the amount of errors that we're introducing to our processing to our fit uh, and carrying through one thing that's really quite important to do when you're starting out is to work with constant for with half maxima. So if we come into our first of our constraints here, so these yellow boxes are uh, tools that we can use to make sure that our fits uh, adhere to a certain rules and boundaries that we can set. So if we come into for with half maximum constraint, this is where we can uh, we can tell CASA to only work to certain limits. So for example, on our first one here we've got a, a lower limit of 0.42 and an upper limit of 10.5 for you know for standard peaks such as carbon 1s and um, we're generally going to be working usually between 1 to 2 EV um, so the limits that CAS are put in by default are obviously just to include all different types of orbitals uh, which might be broad and satellites etc so uh, it just gives you a, a huge window to work with uh, and if you want to narrow that down, uh, you can. Um, but what we're going to do is come into column B. So this is our smaller peak. And we're just going to type A times 1 and hit enter. And that's going to lock the fourth half maximum of the two peaks together. So now if we click fit, it will try and fit the data again. Um, but this time we're keeping the fourth half maximum the same. Uh, now they do actually look... I mean the fit is it fits the data relatively well um, it's not perfect um, but it's not awful so what we can do in order to better understand that data is just think about what our sample actually is and as I mentioned this is polyvinyl pyrrolidone uh, so the structure of that polymer is on screen now so when we think about the different sort of carbon environments there, um, we can we can split them up into into three. We've got our CCCH, so our standard alkyl units, and we've got we can identify three of those. We've got CN, the carbon next to a nitrogen, and then we've got our carbonyl, but our our carbonyl also bonded to a nitrogen, um, which is going to be our high binding energy group here. So at the moment we've got two peaks in there and the the peak model doesn't fit perfectly. Um, it's not awful, but it's it could be improved. So we can then think about, okay, if there's three carbon environments, maybe we should have a look at adding another one. So again, we can just sort of click these and move these. A times one, once again, and then click fit. Now straight away you can see this is a much better fit. Uh, the data looks much cleaner, the, the the envelope around the three peaks looks cleaner and our residual has improved a lot as well. So now we need to start thinking about assigning the identity of these peaks and, and just thinking about do the ratios make sense. So our lowest binding energy peak, if we remember back to our uh, session on what dictates binding energies etc we can think about assigning our lowest binding energy one as the the CCCH and then 
our carbonyl, or amide, is our highest burning energy one, and then in the middle we've got this CN functional group. So with those assigned we can look at the quantification at the bottom and we see that um, here we're seeing a roughly equal contents, a little bit more of the CN, and then about half that for this uh, this third carbon, the C3 carbon feature. Uh, so if we go back to our our molecule, uh, we can see that doesn't necessarily line up with uh, what we've got in terms of the distribution of different carbon elements. So again, we just need to think about uh, is our current model representative and what we can do to improve that more. So looking more at these constraints, uh, one of the other things that we can do is control the area. So in our material, if we have um, two carbon nitrogen functional groups for every one um, carbon carbon slash carbon hydrogen, and apologies the colours don't necessarily match up for the uh, for the uh, the components here. Oh, we'll just make sure we update the <coughs> the um, the line shapes as well. So if we come to component uh, to our area constraints, what we can also do is lock the the area of our CN um, emission to the area of our CCCH. So we have two CNs for every three CCCHs. So if we do A times two over three, we can then change this ratio around, click fit again, and we've now got uh, a more correct area for our, uh, our CC and our CN. So then finally, we have one of the um, carbonyl for every two of the CNs. So we can say in column B, we can say C times 0.5. And this will then lock the area to half of CN. Click fit. And we have a well-fitting envelope. And the, um, the features are in the correct ratios that we would expect them. Uh, one other thing we can do is from uh, reference data, we know some of the, the energy shifts between the different species. So we can just be a little bit um, more confident in terms of the, the energy spacing. So at the moment, CASA is just putting in peaks um, in whatever position it thinks is the best fit. Uh, but we can also use this bottom constraint. So this is the position constraint. And we can use this bottom one to lock peaks into um, different area, uh, sorry, different position differences. So here we're going to set the CN peak to be 1.2 EV higher than the CCCH. So again, I'm going to put A plus 1.2, hit enter, and then click fit again. And uh, 0.8. Apologies. And uh, what we can see now is we've got a very nice fit between the um, CCCH, CN, and the final carbonyl. And, and we can read our percentage concentrations at the bottom. So we're sticking with simple uh, 1S species for now. And really the next step is to just go through the, uh, the practice data files we've got and get practicing in sticking in uh, components, playing around with um, some of the constraints, etc., and just getting used to uh, just getting used to the the interface of the components and getting them in properly. So we can try and recolor some of these.
so that we can try and match these up. So CCCH2, our CN is green. And then we just need to try and find a red. There we go. So we, we, we should match. Yes, so we match those up now. Um, component index is something we'll come on to later. Uh, it's a very useful tool, uh, particularly when we start looking at more complex systems such as multiplets and, and doublets. Um, but it can be just a nice way to separate out, separate out your peaks and, uh, and be sure that you are uh, assigning everything correctly. Okay, so that's a, a, a brief introduction to components. So I mentioned we were going to come back to the calibration. Um, so we've done a bit of an intro on the calibration and how we go about doing that. Uh, and because the carbon-carbon and the carbon-nitrogen are so close here, uh, it would have been quite tricky to try and pick out you know the, the peak intense uh, the peak maxima here if we're trying to align our spectra to the uh, the CCCH so we're going to select that component from our component index click on component in the spectrum processing let's just move this out of the way uh, let's click on component here and that will uh, input the um, the peak maxima from this component and then we're just going to align this to 284.8 so once again we'll just click up here to highlight all of our blocks we're also going to click uh, we're going to select the regions and components from here so this would also apply the same calibration to any um, any processing we've already done so if for example we were to untick these and click apply you can see we move uh, we move everything we've done already. So we're with those selected, we can be sure that we've we've moved all of our backgrounds and our and our peak models that we've put in so far. <clears throat> so uh, thanks for joining us for this introduction to peak modeling. And uh, yeah, be sure to have a go at some of the practice examples. Say so there's no uh, there's no substitute for hands-on experience. So um, follow along with some of the uh, the guides as well on the Guru page, and hopefully you should be producing some some very nice peak models very soon. And then after that, you can jump into the next session, which is going to be looking at how we begin to apply these peak models to to doublets and some more complicated uh, some more complicated spectra. So uh, thanks for joining us, and yeah, we'll see you in the next session.